What's going on Crafts Rights? Today I'm going to show you how I made these modern coat racks. To start, I'm going to rip down and dimension my 1x6 to size. I'm making the natural finished version out of oak and the stained painted versions out of poplar. Poplar is a relatively inexpensive and soft hardwood making it a great option for simple DIY projects. It also takes paint and stain really well, which is perfect for me because I always feel guilty altering nice hardwood. It feels like sacrilege, just kind of makes me feel dirty. If you have a hard time staining nice hardwood instead of letting its natural beauty shine, consider hitting that subscribe and bell button so I know I'm not alone. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. Now the real trick to making this project so easy is these little guys, but we'll get to that later in the build. Next, I'll lay out the corner radiuses, radii, corner circles, with a compass before marking the locations of the dowel holes. For exact measurements, I have plans available that I have linked in the description below. I'll cut the corners off of the bandsaw, cutting a little proud of the lines before refining at the belt sander. If you don't have either of these tools, this can also be done with a jigsaw and an orbital sander pretty easily. After a lot of trial and error, I found an auger bit to be the best tool for drilling the dowel holes, regardless if you're using a drill press or a quick drilling jig for a handheld drill. A Forstner bit chatters around too much, a hole saw cuts a very loose joint, and finding a 3 quarter inch standard bit can be difficult and expensive. Just go slow with the auger bit, like real slow. Otherwise the pilot bit might grab the wood as it's supposed to and pull the workpiece, causing some problems. I also found the auger bit won't cause much tear out, if any, if you go slow and steady with your drill. A piece of painter's tape on the back of the stock helps too. For those of you that don't have a drill press but still want to drill accurate, repeatable, angled holes, I got you. Cut two triangles at the correct angle with the saw of your choice and glue together. Mark on a squared piece of scrap wood where you want your hole to go, then place the tip of your bit on that mark and tilt it, moving the bit and triangle block until they're flush. Glue it down, then add a fence to keep the bit straight and you're good to go. Eventually this will wear out, but it'll get you by in a pinch. The marking lines will also help you line up your jig for drilling. I cut my dowel the length of the miter saw. For the oak, I opted to make my own dowel from offcuts I had. It's easier than you think and less expensive than buying pre-made hardwood dowel. I picked up the technique from Izzy Swan's channel, which you should definitely check out if you're unfamiliar with him. Drilling the hole needed at the end of the dowel to accept the metal knob screw can be a little challenging to get right, but another simple jig makes this easy. Since an auger or Forstner bit has a centered pilot, you can drill about a half an inch into a piece of hardwood scrap, then continue that hole with the size bit needed and you have a very accurate little jig that fits snugly over your dowel and guides your drill bit. I sanded everything to 220 before glue up. This is easier when everything is disassembled. I used very little glue for the assembly since the dowel joints are so snug. It's mostly there as backup, so sorry glue. Hammer your dowels in until the edge just meets up with the back face of the stock. This helps make sure the coat hangers all protrude the same distance. Be careful when hammering your dowels in as the top of the dowel needs to stay flat and square to mate flush with the metal knob. I forgot about this and accidentally mushroomed two of the dowels. After the glue is dried, I flush cut the waste and sanded the back flat before filling any unwanted gaps with wood putty. Or you could use glue and sawdust, your choice. Either way, another quick tip to make cleaning up your fill job easier is to use a chisel to do the majority of the work before sanding away the rest. Now I'll stain one of the coat racks a super dark brown and off camera paint the third one white. Lately I've been really fond of using water-based leather dye to stain my wood. It works so much better than traditional stain. It's very easy to quickly build up color or take a little away if you went too dark. 
The only thing to be aware of is the dye is water-based, so you need to raise the grain with water and then cut back the fuzzies with fresh sandpaper. If you skip this, your finish will be rough. For the top coat, I use trusty shellac. Three coats, scuffing with 320 grit sandpaper in between before paste wax. Remember when I said you could take a little color away if you went too dark with a dye? Well, I totally forgot about that. If you opt to go the dye route, and I suggest you do, try and spray your first layer of top coat on or move very quickly with the shellac. Otherwise, you run the risk of pulling up color with the alcohol that's in the shellac, like I did. While the finish is drying, I prep the metal cap knobs. The ones I use came in several different colors and come with their own screws. There's a link to them in the description. I locked in the threads with super glue before cutting off the screw heads with a Dremel. You could also do this with a hacksaw. I glued the metal caps to their dowels using thick CA glue and painter's tape to hold them in place. While I was attaching the keyhole mounting brackets to the backs of the coat hangers, I had the thought that if I were to do this project again, I would probably finish the sides, front, and dowels before glue up. It was pretty hard to get a finish I was happy with on account of all the angles and things I had to work around. But if you like woodworking projects like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out my video on making a DIY book holder in the top right of your screen.